Hola amigos, uh, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Uh, soy Gerard uh, de uh, Aunet.spanish. Uh, so, welcome guys. Uh, my name is Gerard Beya for Aunet.spanish. And right now I'm uh, in the, my YouTube playlist for Spanish language learning on my channel. So, YouTube channel Gerard Beya. And so we have already done quite a lot of... Uh, uh, lessons together and uh, so the last time we did lesson 90 and we were doing some revisions uh, just like uh, for the for the last uh, four lessons that we had so today we are going to continue and hopefully after two or three lessons of revisions we are going to be on uh, you know, back to where we stopped before my long break of uh, four months, three months. And uh, then uh, we will start learning new things. So let's revise again. And uh, without further delay, let's switch to um, Duolingo. All right, guys. So welcome back. Uh, we are now on Duolingo and we're going to revise unit uh, 17 today. So come on. Come on, come on, come on, here it is. So yeah, we reached unit 24, but uh, we are just going to revise things that we did before continuing. So as we say, the foundation is very important. So there's no use of going fast if we are not going to, to be able later to use uh, our knowledge or remember uh, even. So unit 17 is about describing people, you ser, so the verb to be ser, and estar. So that's something that we already know, but let's just check. Describe people. Carmen y María sono muy estudiosas. Estudiosas means studious. So Carmen and María are very studious. Carmen y María sono muy estudiosas. So this is the adjective that we are learning, estudiosas. Las chicas están nerviosas en la clase. The girls are nervous in the class. So, las chicas están nerviosas en la clase. Esos estudiantes son inteligentes. So, son inteligentes, intelligent. Nerviosas, estudias, estudi estudiosas, sorry. Inteligentes and Rafael, tú eres perezoso. Rafael, tú eres perezoso. Perezoso, sorry. I say perezoso. Tú eres perezoso. Perezoso means lazy. So, Rafael, you are lazy. Muchos estudiantes están enfermos hoy. Enfermos means sick, so están enfermos. ¿Ustedes están cansados hoy? It's a question. So, ¿Ustedes están cansados hoy? Are you guys uh, tired today? So, as you can see, we learn a lot of things, a lot of adjectives, how to describe people. Uh, perezoso, inteligente, enfermo, cansado, nervioso, estudioso, a lot of uh, adjectives. And here is a tip. La oficina es grande y está abierta. Abierta is open. Está abierta. Está cerrada. Abierta, cerrada. Um, yeah, close. Don't let ser and estar scare you. So the two verbs to be in Spanish. You can remember uh, it this way. Pretend that the T in estar is for temporary. So temporary means that it's not permanent, yeah. Yo estoy muy cansado hoy, uh, o yo estoy muy ocupado hoy, like it's written here. It means that I'm very tired today, uh, or I'm very uh, busy today, ocupado. Uh, but you're not gonna be busy for forever, so it's temporary. And uh, another example, how to use the verb estar, it's esta oficina es grande. 
So in this case, of course, it's not about the verb estar, but the verb ser, because it's a characteristic. It's a characteristic of uh, the office, and it's not gonna change. So esta oficina es grande. It is. We should not say esta grande. So the office is big, and that's the characteristic. It's kind of permanent. And uh, another tip, let's talk about ser versus estar. Use forms of ser for description of people and things. So el gato es negro. So when it comes to describe people and things, so you have to use ser. Use forms of estar for temporary states of being and locations. So el gato está contento, uh, happy, feliz. Uh, we can check. El gato está contento. El gato está en la mesa. En la mesa is on the table. El gato está en la mesa. En la mesa. All right, so we revise a little bit uh, the prepositions as well. So things that are not so easy. And uh, so moving on, unit 18. Talk about likes, talk about interactions. So we have uh, already, we have had, sorry, already a unit about uh, how to speak about your preferences and so on with the verbs, uh, non-transitive verbs, uh, such as uh, gustar, yeah, and uh, encantar. But let's see what, uh, what else we can learn. Uh, so about uh, this unit, uh, talk about likes. So normalmente nos gusta viajar mucho. Normally we like traveling a lot. So nos gusta viajar mucho. A mí también. So a mí también it's me too. A mí también. And a ti te gusta correr en el parque? Uh, do you like running in the park? ¿Qué les gusta a ellos? ¿Qué les gusta a ellos? ¿Qué les gusta a ellos? Uh, so, what do they like? ¿Qué les gusta a ellos? Mm -hmm. So, here we see the subject pronoun for they. We have seen me gusta, te gusta, uh, se gusta, o le gusta. Uh, nos gusta, vos gusta, <laughs> and uh, les gusta also exist. So les, les encanta caminar en la playa. So they love walking on the beach. A ella le gusta. Actually, there is not se gusta. It's le gusta. Yeah. My apologies. So a ella le gusta nadar. Le gusta nadar. Eh, se gusta. Maybe they is se gusta for usted. I, I'm not sure. Eh? I'm not absolutely sure. But I think it's le. Le gusta. A usted le gusta. Yeah. A ella le gusta nadar en el río. Río is a river, so nadar swim. And uh, next tip. A ustedes les gusta el español. So... A ustedes, ustedes it's you guys, so we've seen that uh, a Eduardo le gusta, means Eduardo likes, and nos gusta means we like. To talk about uh, what multi pe multiple people like, use les gusta. So le and les, so for plural you just put an S, so le becomes les. Les gusta ir al... Parque. A mí me gusta la música. It's also common to hear a mí me gusta. A mí me gusta o a ellos les gustas. So here it's para mí, for example, para ellos. Um, it's kind of instrumentative case, I guess. For the pronoun, I, I'm not sure how to say it. It's not... Um, it's not uh, an object's pronoun, it's something else. I just don't know. I don't remember. A mí me gusta ir de compras. I like uh, shopping. So, 
a mí te gusta a ti, a ti, but it's the same as para ti, so for you. Uh, a ti te gusta correr en el parque, do you like to run, do you like running, sorry. Uh, this is very important. We don't say, do you like to run? You don't say, I like uh, to go shopping. I like going shopping. And, oh, I like shopping. Do you like running in the park? So, a ti te gusta correr en el parque? Sometimes this is used to emphasize who is, who it is who likes something. But sometimes it's used just because. Key phrases, talk about interactions. ¿Qué países cono conoces? ¿Qué países conoces? What countries are you familiar with? So, yo conozco todos los países de Europa. I am familiar with all the countries in, um, in, 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 in Europe. So, conoces, eh, saber, saber, and conoces. Uh, Yo no, no lo sé. Yo sé. Sabes. Yo sé. Tú sabes. So that's how it goes, yeah? But conocer. Yo conozco todos los países de Europa. Uh, ¿Conocen a mucho gente aquí? Do you know a lot of people here? Quiero visitar a mi hermano en México. I want to visit my brother in Mexico. Yo llamo a, a mama todos los días, todos los días, every day, todos los días. But you can say, uh, I think, each day. So each day, I guess sometimes you, in certain context, you can say, cada día, cada día. Uh, there's also a tip here, special verbs. So some verbs are special only in the yo form. Yo, it's I. It's not like the gangster, yo. Yeah. Uh, so why all the other phones uh, follow the regular pattern? So here we see yo conozco for the verb conocer, to know, or to be acquainted. Uh, here it's written like know and meet. Tu conoces, conoces, so it's just this dead that looks a little bit weird, like why do we have this, conozco, it's not an S, it's a, but conoces after that, and then él, ella, usted, conoce, and nosotros, nosotras, conocemos, ellos, ellas, ustedes, conocen, so beautiful, muy bien, eh, so, vamos adelante. Let's go forward. So, tip. Yo visito a Juan. Yo visito a Juan. When you're talking about people uh, in Spanish, you should always add a between the verb and the person you're mentioning. Yo siempre visito el museo. So, I visit the museum. So, yeah. But yo visito a Juan. It's very important because if you visit someone, um, come to visit us. Come to visit us. Yeah. Uh, come, come, come to see us. Come to visit. Uh, come to visit. In English, you say come to visit. Yes. Come for a visit. Yes. Come, come to visit. Yeah. And uh, in French, uh, it's not the same also. It's more like in Spanish. You say, viens nous rendre visite. So it's, yeah. Like in English, you would say also, come, come and pay us, a pay us a visit when you have time. And yes, so... Eh, how do you say this? Venir. Vengo. Ven, venga. Venga, venga, visitar a nosotros, maybe. Quesas. Yo no sé. Yo no sé. Okay. So that was unit 18. 
and uh, so we revise quite a lot now we're going to look at unit 19 describe how you feel use pronouns I think if you will describe how you feel you will use a lot of uh, of the verb estar because it's temporary we have seen that use pronouns so we're going to understand more uh, uh, how to use pronouns and maybe understand what kind of pronouns they are describe how you feel tienes hambre do you have uh, do you have hunger literally translated but of course it's like more are you hungry rafael tienes hambre rafael si sí, tengo ganas de comer i i feel like uh, like eating pizza so tengo ganas de comer pizza Necesito agua porque tengo sed. So I need water because I'm thirsty. I need water because I'm thirsty. Ustedes tiene, tienen calor. Are you hot, guys? Are you feeling hot? So ustedes uh, tienen calor. Yo tengo frío ahora. I'm cold now. Tener. Tener is to, to have. Yeah. Remember that the verb uh, querer can look uh, different in certain forms with the E changing to IE. So like yo quiero, tu quieres, tener does the same thing. Yes, I do remember that. So cuantos años tienes tu? Um, but uh, so you're asking like how, how old or how many years do you have literally? But the tener also have special you form like tengo. Uh, yo tengo, tú tienes. Él, ella, usted tiene. Nosotros, nosotras tenemos. Ellos, ellas, ustedes tienen. Remember, in the nosotros, nosotras form, the e doesn't change. So that's uh, quite um, significant. And uh, you have to be careful when uh, conjugating the verb tener. And but you probably get used to it, yeah, with practice. So keep uh, keep practicing. Key phrases use pronouns. Gabriel te amo. No, Gabriel te amo. It's a statement. So Gabriel te amo. Tú no me quieres. You don't love me. Tú no me quieres. Uh -huh. Yeah, in Spanish there is the verb amar and uh, querer. So te quiero and te amo. Te quiero, te amo. Yes, Juan, te compra muchos regalos. Juan buys you a lot of gifts. Juan, te compras muchos regalos. Regalos, gifts, muchos, muchos regalos, a lot of gifts. Comprar is to buy, so Juan compra, compra para ti, so te compras. Ana siempre me escucha, escuchar is to listen, so siempre, always, Ana siempre me escucha. Listen to me, yeah. Uh, and Miguel te ayuda mucho, te ayuda. Here we see the use of the, the pronouns te, me. Uh, what else? Just this, yeah. Felipe, me quieres? Do you love me? Me quieres? Uh, yeah, so that, that's it. Now we have the tip, me quieres o me amas? Te quiero and te amas both mean I love you. So what's the difference? So good question. In general, you'll use te quiero in casual moments with close friends, or extended family and uh, adios te quiero te quiero so it's like love you but te amo is generally reserved for, for romantic partners or immediate family it's used in more serious um, serious situations like uh, you know when you make a declaration and so on. So here is another tip. Duolingo nos ayuda. Here we have the pronoun for nosotros, nosotras, nos. 
And in English, we say, you know me, they or they know us. In Spanish, words like me or nos come before the verb, not after. So that's uh, quite a big difference, yeah. Tu me ayudas and mis padres siempre nos ayudan. Mis padres ayudan. As ayudan nos. No, nos ayudan. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry, guys. Time is running. We are now 20 minutes in this lesson. We are going to do unit 20. Use irregular verbs. So that would be our third exercise or third uh, unit uh, today. Uh, so we have been revising. Uh, that we have uh, been revising, yeah. Uh, unit 20. Use irregular verbs. So cada mañana hago mi cama. Hago. It's to, I make. So every day. Every morning, sorry, mañana, cada mañana, I, will, I said cada día, cada día, also before. Every morning, cada mañana, hago mi cama. Papa siempre hace el desayuno, desayuno is the breakfast, so el desayuno, the breakfast. So siempre hace, hacer. So the verb hacer is just uh, the first one is uh, a little bit weird. It's conjugated like this, ago. Mm -hmm. uh, ago mi cama. Te pones, uh, te pones el vestido nuevo hoy. Te pones. Are you putting on the new dress today? So, are you wearing? So, yeah. I forgot a lot of things actually. But, pones. Pones is like to put. Poner. Yo pongo, pongo, pones, tú pones. And uh, another one is yo salgo de casa a, los o a las ocho y media. So 8.30. Yo salgo, I leave, salir, salir. And siempre estoy en casa después de las cinco. I, o I am always at home after five. Yes, so now we will uh, have a look uh, at these two verbs and how we need to conjugate them. So, hacer and salir, or hacer to make, salir to leave, are very special verbs. They follow a similar pattern for the yo form. So, you have hago, salgo. Haces, hace, hacemos, hacen, sale, sale. Salimos, si sí, salimos, y salen. Yeah, so you have to remember that you don't say ako, for example. It's ago. You don't say salo, but you say salgo. Okay, guys, so that's it for unit 20. There is not much to say about it. I guess we will be able even to to talk about unit 21. So we are going there. We're getting there, guys. Because it's just a revision. We're not doing exercises or whatever. So it's uh, going fast. So unit 21, explore grammar tips and key phrases for this unit. So describe activities. ¿Quieres probar la, la sopa? So la sopa, it's the soup. So probar, it's uh, to try, probar. Yo siempre pruebo tus sopas. I always try your soups, tus so sopas. Yo siempre pruebo tus sopas. Yes, tus sopas. ¿Dónde quieres almorzar? Almorzar. Almorzar is to eat lunch. So ¿dónde quieres? Where do you want to, to have lunch or to eat lunch? Uh, almorzar. I know there is desayuno, uh, la cena, and uh, desayuno, cena, and I forgot how to say lunch actually. 
Well, okay. Me gusta almorzar en el parque. Okay. Me gusta almorzar. El perro no puede comer. So, poder. Uh, to, to, can. To be able to do. So, no, no puede. No puede comer. Aquí. Yo pruebo muchos uh, pasteles. So, I try many cakes. Uh, so, stem changing verbs. In some verbs, like almorzar uh, and poder, the O changes to UE in most of the forms. So, los chicos almuerzan en, el, en la escuela. En la escuela. So, the boys eat lunch at school. Like uh, for all the stem changing verbs, the nosotros, nosotras form is the odd one out. Yes, we have seen that before, but here it's a little bit different because it's like uh, UE instead of IE, for example. Almorzar, to have, to eat the lunch, yes, almorzar. Almuerzo, almuerzo, almuerzas, almuerza, almorza, almorzamos, almorzamos and almuerzan. So that was for almuerzo, almorzor. <laughs> Sorry, that was for almorzar. And the verb poder, yo puedo, tú puedes, él, ella puede, nos, nos, tres, podemos, eh, ellos, ellas, ustedes, pueden. As simple as that. So just remember, sometimes the O can be changed into UE. Let's talk about stem changing verbs also for, 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 for what? So some verbs use the regular endings, but have a vowel change, except for this, for example, O changes. So we have just seen that. I don't know why they just repeat it. Uh, yeah, but okay. Yo puedo, tú puedes, él, ella, usted puede, nosotros, nosotras podemos, ellos, ellas, usted pueden. And the verb perder, perder, perder is to lose. Perder. Yeah, to lose something. So yo pierdo. So it seems, yeah, here's a difference, a big difference. Like I said, uh, the O can be changed in UE, but the E can be changed in IE. We have seen that before. And uh, it was for the verb tener. Tienes, for example. To tiene. I don't know. I don't remember exactly, but yeah. Does change. Yo pierdo, tú pierdes, él, ella, usted pierde. And nosotros, nosotras, perdemos, and ellos, ellas, ustedes, pierden. So that's how it goes. All right, guys, so that was Unit 21 about uh, activity, describe activities and use uh, stem changing. We have seen the irregular verbs before. So that was Unit uh, 21, and I guess... We just have one more unit and uh, then we'll be done. We'll be good. So talk about weather, talk about interest. Let's see if we can do this and finish everything. So talk about weather. ¿Cómo está el tiempo hoy? What is the weather like today? Está muy nublado. Nublado cloudy. Nublado. And hace calor en México ahora. So it's hot in Mexico now. ¿Qué tiempo hace en Boston? What's the weather like in Boston? Hace mucho frío en el invierno. Invierno, winter. Mucho frío, calor, uh, yeah. Nublado. Uh, so what else? Hace mucho frío en el invierno. Llueve mucho en mayo. So it rains. Llueve. Llueve mucho en mayo. Llueve. Llueve o llueve. Llueve mucho en mayo. Llueve. Llueve mucho en mayo. Llueve. It's not llueve, but llueve. 
¿Qué tiempo hace? So, what's the weather like? To talk about the weather in, in English, we usually say it's hot or it's windy. In Spanish, you don't need words, words like it. Nieva mucho en enero. So, it snows a lot in January. Nieva mucho en enero. And we also have lleve mucho hoy. It's raining a lot today. So, nieva. Uh, I guess the verb can be nievar. To, to snow and uh, lueve it's lievar maybe or lever I'm not sure a lot of weather phrases begin with hace so hacer it's to make yes uh, hace frío hace calor hace sol hace viento but you say for example nublado nublado Está nublado. But hace viento. It's windy. Talk about the interest now. So, ¿a ti te interesa el fútbol? Sí, me interesa mucho el fútbol. So, a mi padre le encanta escuchar la radio. So, escuchar, to listen. So, here we see encantar, interesar. So, yeah. It's uh, those verbs, intransitive, yeah, verbs, intransitive verbs. A mi padre le, uh, so I already said that. A los chicos no les interesa este grupo. The, the boys are not interested in this group. Nos interesa hacer otras cosas. We are interested in doing other things. And here we have some tips. So me interesa mucho Duolingo. De verdad, sí. Sí, uh, de verdad. Interesar fo follows the same pattern as gustar and encantar, so it is transitive. Intransitive, sorry. He likes soccer. Le gusta el fútbol. Le gusta el fútbol. Le interesa la música. Uh, for instance, she is interested in music. A mí me interesa la música. A ti te, te interesa la música. Sí, a ti, a mí, sí. También. A él le interesa la música. A nosotros nos interesa la música. Notice the, the change of the pronoun, yeah? Me, te, le, nos, vos, uh, les. Okay, guys, so that's it. I think we better stop here at unit um, 22. Because we have now, uh, how to say, past the 30 minutes that we usually have for, for one lesson. So the length of one lesson is 30 minutes in average. So we should stop here, guys. So thank you so much for your attention. That was uh, revision again, just revisions. And I uh, hope you, you checked your knowledge and... Uh, maybe it reminded you or helped you to correct some of the mistakes you were you, you make when you talk uh, in Spanish. So, muchas gracias, amigos, por su atención. Y um, nos vemos a la próxima lesión. Lesión, sí. Adiós. Hasta luego. So, hasta luego, amigos. See you guys.